what is actually going on in the real estate market? April, 2023, because there's a lot of noise. Your roommate from college is posting on Twitter that there's gonna be another market crash like 2008. Your mom's realtor is telling you it's the perfect time to buy. And then Nancy, your next door neighbor is telling you that all the house prices in the neighborhood are dropping drastically. There have been so many false misleading headlines out there. You know it, I know it. So how do we determine really what's going on? You know what never lies? History, numbers, and statistics. Statistics. Okay, I know numbers aren't exciting and I will do my best not to bore you. But if we examine some of the basics of what's really going on in our local Phoenix market, we will be able to make way better decisions whether we're buying or selling and really tailor our decisions to meet our specific needs and circumstances. Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm a realtor from Real Broker here to help you with all things Phoenix. Okay, so let's first dissect some of these headlines that we're seeing like comparing us to the 2008 crash or the house prices dropping really quickly or another foreclosure disaster up on the horizon. Okay, so let's look at basic supply and demand and what we have going on right now. So if we look at this chart, we see the blue line that indicates the how much supply we have. So if you look all the way to the right, you'll see in 2023 today, our supply is really low and our demand is also really low. Both are below that 100 point mark there. If you go over to the left, you'll see in 2008, okay, so we have really, really low demand. And that's a lot of what we're seeing the media point out right now. The reason why we're heading towards a 2008 crisis is because our demand is so low. But the most important number they aren't looking at is the supply. Because look at the supply in 2008, and then look at the supply today. So our supply is still lower than our demand. And because of that, we are in technically a seller's market. So when we examine the supply and the amount of demand to put that together, that's how we come up with our market index. So anything really above 110 is considered a seller's market. 90 to 110 is considered more of a balanced market. And then below 90 is considered a buyer's market. Now today our market index is about 135. This is April, 2023. Now we can see last fall that the demand did decrease quite a bit compared to the beginning of last year. And this is largely due to interest rates. So the frenzy that we were seeing last year, it did curtail quite a bit in the fall, but now we're seeing things start to level out. And to be frank, it's kind of boring right now. We are seeing an increase a little bit, a little hotter of a market in the spring, which is pretty typical, but it's been pretty mellow overall. Now, Phoenix Metro is huge, so I do wanna break down a little bit um, each of what each of the cities look like within Phoenix, because we are seeing a lot of differences. Um, Chandler right now is super hot. The interesting part is the demand actually isn't crazy high there, it's just that the supply is really, really low. I have heard a lot of people coming into open houses that are moving here, relocating for tech jobs, particularly with Intel. Now, the other, if you look down towards the bottom, you'll see that Goodyear and Queen Creek, they're actually weaker markets or more of a buyer's market. Now, this is the other thing you have to consider supply and demand because these areas, there is a significant amount of demand in both of these areas, Queen Creek and Buckeye. These towns are growing like crazy. However, the supply there is also pretty significant. So the supply is outrunning the demand there. So it does put those cities in somewhat of a buyer's market. Okay, so let's look right now at home prices and if they're dropping or not. So in this graph, you'll see I started it from 2021, but you can see over throughout 2021 in the beginning of 22, it was a sharp increase in price values. And we, for the people that are living here, you guys already all know this has happened. However, once interest rates started to increase, we did see a drop off in the fall. So we did see prices drop quite significantly through this time. And then we started seeing things level out in the beginning of the year. And then now they are on a slower trajectory, but they are increasing somewhat, which again is pretty typical for this time of year. Now, something to think about when people are talking about the news, when they're talking about house prices dropping, they're talking about year over year. So they're looking at March, what happened this year compared to March last year. So the home values this March compared to last year are a lot lower. 
but we already knew that was happening that's not really news because the price in or the house prices dropping happened in october so we are anticipating that we're going to continue to see that that year over year statistic is going to indicate that house prices are dropping for the next couple of months. Now, another statistic that we can look at is month over month. And we are seeing home prices when we look at February compared to March, we are seeing that prices did go up a little bit. But like I said, again, that's pretty typical for this time of year in the spring. I will be frank, it's not a huge increase in price, which is probably good for affordability in this area too we don't necessarily want to see house prices skyrocket as an economy as a whole that's really not advantageous for us so if you guys don't know tina tambor she's fantastic she's from the Comfort report the way she explains it is that she talks about how we had this wild party in 21 and 22 and then in the fall we experienced this terrible hangover we got through the fall we got through december and now we're just back to normal life. We're back to our mundane, Monday, Tuesday living. Nothing really exciting is happening right now. So let's talk foreclosures. Okay, so if you guys look at this graph, this goes all the way back to 2008. And the headliner I'm sure you guys have seen is that we are skyrocketing in foreclosures compared to the past couple years. Okay, just look at this visually for a minute compared to 2008. We are having barely any foreclosures. Sure, it might be twice the amount of foreclosures that we had in 2020. But when you look historically, how many foreclosures are happening? It's minuscule. And in the past couple of years, Americans have reached records for having the amount of equity they have in their homes. So this also is just gonna really minimize our risk of having higher amount of foreclosures. So really to summarize everything that's going on, guys, it is quite boring. Nothing really that exciting is happening. So a lot of these headliners we're talking about, they're talking about old news and they're just using the statistics in a way that's not very clear. And it makes it look like something crazy is happening right now. Now I'm talking about Phoenix specifically. Now the East coast and the West coast, I'm sure you guys have heard recently, there's a lot of differences that are going on, but you have to look at the big picture. Now, where is the market going? That is the crystal ball question. Truth is we don't know. No one knows. And a lot of it goes back to the basics of supply and demand, which is then impacted by mortgage rates. And where mortgage rates are right now at 6.6%, people don't wanna sell their homes because they currently have a mortgage rate that's really low. So if they sell their home and buy another home, they're gonna have a lot higher mortgage rate than what they probably have on their home right now. And for home buyers, it's bringing this challenge of affordability right now because their monthly payments are so high with where the mortgage rates are right now. And then of course we have this issue with inflation, which inflation is still really high high right now. It's about 6% and on average inflation is usually a little over 3%. So the Federal Reserve can use policy tools to try to control inflation by adjusting interest rates. Now, if inflation continues to rise, it could lead to higher mortgage rates. And if vice versa, if it lowers, it could eventually lead to a lower mortgage rate. Overall, there are a lot of layers to this and there are multiple economic factors and global market trends that can also impact mortgage rates. And I'm not even going to dive in today about the bank crisis and how that may impact mortgage rates as well. So is it a bad time to buy or sell right now? I want to be fully transparent. It really depends on your situation. There's really no black or white answer, but if you overall are going to have stability in your life for the next, let's say four to five years and plan on holding this home for the longer game, I would say, yeah. But again, it really depends on your individual situation. So if you have any specific questions regarding your specific circumstances, I would love to talk to you about it. If you guys have anything you want to add or questions, please comment below. Also, if you've found any of this helpful, please subscribe. It helps me substantially. And I hope to continue to be your number one resource for all things Phoenix.